Hey everyone, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. My name is Shirag Vaishna and in this video we will have a look at 5 operating system concepts that you should know as a developer. So do watch till end and let's get started. Being a developer you might have focused your skills on problem solving and data structures. Well no doubt they are one of the most essential skills but apart from that have you ever tried to think that what else is more important. You checked your code and you find that there is nothing wrong with your code. Now what could be the reason behind this? Well, one of the reasons can be your operating system. Now if you want to debug your program, how would you do it if you don't know how the operating system works? Possibilities are there that you are accessing too many files or you are running out of memory. And to resolve these issues, for sure you need to know about swap or input output blocking. So from all the above conversation, you might have understood that why it is important to know about operating systems. And being a developer, you should understand the importance of operating system. So in this video, we will discuss about the five operating system concepts that will help you to excel your job as a developer. So let's head over to the first one. So the first we are having is process management. A process is basically defined as a program in execution. And this process should be executed sequentially. Suppose when you write a computer program in a text file and after that when you executed that program it becomes a process in your system. And this process is basically four sections. Stack, heap, text and data. Stack is responsible for storing temporary data like functions or method parameters and it returns address and local variables. The heap section allocates dynamic memory to the process during its runtime. The text includes the current activity represented by the values of the program. And at the end, the data section stores all the local and global variables. And this whole process passes through five different states. First is start, then ready, then running, then waiting, and after that terminate it or exit. Second, we are having concepts of thread. So a thread can be defined as a flow of execution of the process code. A thread keeps track of all the instructions that need to be executed next in the program counter. Threads are generally used in implementing web servers and network servers. Mainly there are two kinds of thread, user level thread and kernel level thread. In user level thread, the thread management kernel is not aware about the existence of the threads. And the thread library maintains the code to create and destroy the threads. While in the kernel level code, as the name signifies, the thread level management is done by the kernel and in the application area you won't find the thread management code. It is directly supported by the operating system. And kernel is responsible for creating, scheduling and managing the kernel space. Third, we are having scheduling. In scheduling, the process manager takes the responsibility to remove all the running process from the CPU. Also, it chooses the next process based on a specific strategy. And for a multi-programming operating system, scheduling is a really essential part as more than one process can be loaded into the executable memory at a time and each process shares a CPU once it gets loaded. Mainly your operating system maintains the following important process scheduling queue. The first we are having is job queue. Job queue takes the responsibility to keep all the processes in the system. Second we are having ready queue. In its main memory, all the processes reside which are ready and waiting to execute. And the third we are having is device queue. This queue stores all the processes that are blocked due to unavailability of input output device. Fourth we are having is memory management. So memory management is a functionality of an operating system that handles and maintains the primary memory. Every memory location is tracked by memory management. It checks how much memory is allocated to a process. It decides which process gets memory at what time. Also updates whenever memory is freed up or unallocated. The operating system maps the logical address into physical address at the time of memory allocation. Mainly there are three kinds of address that is used in a program. The first one is symbolic address. This is the one that we use in our source code having variable name, constant, instruction labels as its basic elements. Second is relative address. During the compilation process, the compiler converts a symbolic address into relative address. And third is physical address. The loader takes the responsibility to generate these address at the time when the program is being loaded on the main memory. Now the fifth concept we are having is inter-process communication. In an operating system, the process gets divided into two types independent and cooperative. Independent processes don't get affected by the execution of other programs, while on the other hand, the cooperating processes get affected by the other executing programs. Independent processes executes more efficiently in these situations, their cooperative nature is utilized for increasing computational power, 
modularity and convenience and in this mechanism processes are allowed to communicate with each other and communication is seen as a method of cooperation between them so these were the five operating system concepts that you should know as a developer if you want to know more about it there are a lot of articles on geeks for geeks website starting from very basic introduction to all the advanced link will be in the description go check it out also if you having any doubt regarding whatever i have explained in this video do ask in the comment section i will for sure answer it so do like this video subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching